Father Benedict Rochelle was a famous American Franciscan priest who died a few years ago. He was often seen on television on EWTN and he wrote many great spiritual books. I remember once hearing him tell the story of how, as a young boy, he had a teacher called Sister Consolata. One day, she gave him a holy card and she wrote on the back of it, Ora pro me, Latin for pray for me. So young Benedict took the card home and when he showed it to his father, his father told him to ask Sister why she had written the message in Latin. So the next day Benedict asked the nun and her simple reply changed the direction of his life. I wrote it in Latin, she told him, because you are going to be a priest. And Father Benedict said that for the rest of his life he never thought of or desired to be anything else. And he served the church immensely for decades and he influenced countless souls along the way, and all springing from a single word of encouragement spoken by a religious sister that sparked something in him. It's amazing how much our words, when God pours his grace into them, can change lives forever. I can testify to that myself. A single line in a rather dull homily at my grandfather's funeral changed my heart and the direction of my life forever. Had that line not been spoken, who knows where I'd be and what I'd be doing right now. In St. John's Gospel, John the Baptist points Jesus out to his disciples who go after Jesus. Jesus turns to them and eventually invites them simply Come and see. And the two fishermen, Andrew and John, are hooked, not just for the rest of that day, but for the rest of their lives. But what if John the Baptist had not spoken to them and encouraged them that day? Sometimes it frustrates me a little when I talk to young men about a vocation to the priesthood. Often they have a desire to take the plunge, but they sit endlessly on the fence, waiting for some awe-inspiring nudge from Jesus, maybe that he'll appear to them and make things crystal clear. They want something as clear as the sign that the prophet Samuel gets when he was a little boy in the temple, a direct call from the Lord. But even Samuel isn't all that clear about his call. It takes him a while to recognize it for what it is. St. Francis of Assisi heard Jesus very clearly tell him to rebuild the church. But it took him a little while to understand that the Lord was not talking about blocks of stone. Sometimes people are so busy trying to hear the Lord's call in a way that they want it to come, that they're a bit deaf to the actual call he is giving. The Lord can and does use a variety of ways to call each person to follow him. Every priest I know has been called in a different way. In the next seven or eight years, we in my diocese will have a maximum of one new priest ordained, because at the moment we only have one seminarian and it takes at least seven years to go through the seminary formation and be ordained. In that same time period, by my reckoning, we will have in our diocese perhaps a dozen priests passing retirement age, to say nothing of priests who might get sick, die or leave the ministry. That means that the best case scenario vocation-wise in my diocese is that in the seven years time we will have 11 priests less for the diocese than we currently have. Will some of our parishes have a priest serving them in seven or eight years? I don't know. And that same scenario 
is more or less in every diocese in Ireland. So please encourage vocations. Please pray for vocations. Now don't pester the young man. God doesn't need nor want you to do that. But if you see that he might have the qualities that would make a good priest, then pray for him. And if the Lord wants to use you as he used Sister Consolata for Father Benedict, then maybe, after prayer, step out on a limb and mention to that young man that you think he'd make a good priest. More than likely, he will laugh it off. But you never know how the Lord will use that prompting from you. When I was discerning, I had an attraction to the priesthood, but also a huge aversion to it. I wrestled with the idea, and every time I thought I'd finally set it aside as an option, someone would mention it to me. For example, I'd go to confession, and I'd say nothing about priesthood or discernment, and the priest would just randomly say, Have you ever thought of the priesthood? And I'd be thinking to myself, This guy's crazy. I'm telling him my sins and he's asking me if I want to be a priest. A friend at the time mentioned it a couple of times, just at the moment when I'd be most dead set against it. Now none of them knew what I was discerning in the secret of my soul. But Jesus used them time and again to keep that door in my heart open to the possibility that he was indeed calling me to serve him in the priesthood. To any young man who might be wrestling with the idea of the call to the priesthood, know that there is a reason why that thought is stirring up in you. And maybe you should explore it a bit more. If Jesus is calling you, then the priest wants you, the the church wants you to respond, wants you to discern it, and wants to help you discern it. Because if Jesus is calling you, then the church needs you. So answer the call and allow the Lord to lead you on his path.